compounds like beta carotene, chlorophyll, retinol, and other molecules containing long conjugated systems are often colored. So the molecular origins of color are highly relevant to conjugated molecules, and that's the topic of this video. We're going to look at some foundations of the molecular origins of color and see how as we lengthen conjugated systems, they go from absorbing light primarily in the ultraviolet range of the spectrum, which is relatively high energy, to the visible range, which is a little bit lower in energy for electronic transitions. When an electron is excited from a lower energy orbital to a higher energy orbital. From introductory chemistry, we know that compounds appear colored due to the absorption of light, and the absorption of light involves excitation of electrons from lower to higher energy orbitals, at least in the ultraviolet and visible range. So the general picture here is, let's say we have a molecule with frontier orbitals as shown here, a highest occupied MO with a pair of electrons and a lowest unoccupied MO that's empty. When this molecule absorbs light, it's going to do so such that that absorption corresponds to an energy gap between the HOMO and LUMO, where, again, from introductory chemistry, we know that that energy gap is equal to HC over lambda, the wavelength of the photon absorbed. So, roughly speaking, this is an approximation, but it's a good approximation generally. The energy of the photon absorbed corresponds to the energy of the HOMO-LUMO gap, and the HOMO-LUMO transition is often the most prevalent, the strongest, the most intense absorption or emission for a, a molecular compound. This leads to a situation where we're, we have an excited state with one electron in the LUMO and one in the HOMO. Now, when a molecule absorbs light, it's generally not the entire molecule that absorbs it. There's a particular chunk or section or moiety within the molecule that absorbs the light, and it's known as a chromophore. And long conjugated systems are fantastic chromophores for visible light. So on this slide, for example, we see examples of unsaturated and conjugated systems, ethylene, butyl-1,3-diene, and beta-carotene, which has a ridiculously long conjugated system right here. And what we notice is that ethylene, butyl-1,3-diene, and cyclohexane, which is way over here on the left and is a fully saturated system with no double bonds, these guys absorb in the ultraviolet range of the spectrum, which is a relatively high energy photon, right? There's a relatively large homo-lumo gap. But as we saw earlier, as we shrink that gap by, first of all, creating unsaturation and then lengthening the conjugated system by adding on additional double bonds, the homo-lumo gap shrinks. This delta E becomes smaller, and as a result, the wavelength of light absorbed becomes lar larger or longer, right? And this pushes molecules into visible range absorptions. And so beta carotene, for example, absorbs at about right here. So as we lengthen the pi system, as it gets longer, the energy of the photon absorbed gets smaller, and we move from the ultraviolet into the visible range. Now, an ultraviolet visible or UV vis spectrum puts a quantitative spin on this. We vary the wavelength of light impinging on the sample and measure the intensity or extent of absorption via what's called the molar absorptivity epsilon. Those analytical details aren't super important for us, but just so we know what we're looking at here, this is basically a graph of the intensity of absorption as a function of the wavelength of light absorbed. And there's a key wavelength here, lambda max. This is the wavelength at which absorption is strongest. And generally, this corresponds to the homo-lumo transition. So roughly, delta E between the homo and lumo is H times C divided by lambda max, that wavelength of maximum absorption. And as we just mentioned, as the pi system gets longer, this homo-lumo gap shrinks, and the wavelength of maximum absorption gets longer. And you can see the quantitative spin on this in this table, where in going from ethylene to butadiene to hexatriene, the homo-lumo gap is getting smaller and the wavelength of maximum absorption is getting longer.